In today's video, I wanted to get to three underrated prospects in the New York Islanders system. Why are they underrated and why shouldn't they be? As always, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much. Also, head over to Twitter and follow at TLO Mitch. That's me. Don't miss any breaking information about prospects that I haven't yet been able to get a video out on. Now, who are the three underrated prospects in the Islanders system? <clears throat> Now, like I said, so as you know, relative to the rest of the NHL, the Islanders prospect pool isn't really highly regarded, right? It's not seen like the Islanders prospect pool is loaded with talent. Now, that doesn't mean there isn't talent there. So today I want to get to three players who aren't really seen as being top prospects in this prospect pool, but that very well should be. The first prospect I wanted to get to is Colin Adams, a recent graduate from the University of North Dakota who just signed a two-year ELC with the Islanders and will be going pro as of 21-22. So what are the knocks against him? Well, the first one is he's small. He's 5'9". And I know, I know the NHL shouldn't dictate potential based off of size and should do so based off of talent, but that's where we are. We haven't yet learned from the Braden Points, the Johnny Gaudreau's, the Martin St. Louis, or the Theo Fleury's, and any other undersized player I haven't yet mentioned. Um, we, we should have learned from them. But the NHL hasn't yet, right? If you stand six feet or less, you are undersized and thus under potential, which is dumb. But that's how it is. There's also the idea that he's a slow starter. When you look at his career stats, his first two years, he combined for 15 points. That's not really great. but in the second half, my God, does he pour it on. 28 points in year three, 34 points in year four. Re 34 points in 29 games also. Like, really, really good player. But it took a while for him to get there. And that's a knock. So what are the pros for Colin Adams? Why is he underrated? Well, he's a really smart player. He knows how to play both ends of the ice. And he finds open pockets all over the place. This kid knows where to go and where the puck is going to go. He's also got some pretty soft hands. It's not to say that he's hyper-talented or that he's going to make the NHL based off of talent alone, but he's got that talent to help him push to that next level. The second player I want to bring up is Ruslan Ishkakov. Now, to anyone who's followed me for a while, this won't come as a shock or a surprise. You already know that I regard Ruslan Ishkakov pretty highly already. So what are the knocks against him? Well, just like Colin Adams, he's small. He's even smaller at 5'8". So just like Adams, he's got to try even harder just to stand out against equally talented people who are six feet tall. It's dumb, but that's the NHL. There's also the idea that he's not really a complete player. It's a false idea, but it's still one that follows him around. He's really seen as offense first and not a 200-foot player. Now, he's not necessarily... Um, defense first. He's more offense, but he can play defense. And, and I'll get to that in a second. There's also the idea that he bounces around, which is true, right? He spent two years at UConn and then went pro last year and then is joining Adler this year for 21-22. There's a lot of bouncing going on there, which, you know, doesn't really look great. But there's a few factors for that. Like he needed to go pro last year. Uh, he wasn't going to get the same number of games played with uh, TPS as he would have had if he stayed at UConn. And why he's going to Adler now, I, I don't necessarily know why, but I would imagine he's just going to be able to learn even more going there than staying at TPS. So what are the pros for Ishikov? Talent. Oh my god, talent. This kid has so much skill and talent, it's incredible. He's easily the most talented player in the Islanders' prospect pool. Easily. Some might say that um, Simon Holmstrom should be top ranked because he's got that hockey IQ. Sure, fine. Holmstrom has a lot of high-key IQ, but Russian Shkakov has that and hand talent. Like, this kid is so skilled, it's incredible. But unlike other highly skilled players that were in the Islanders' prospect pool, Joshua saying, this kid is coachable. He really is. Right? He started off the year last year with TPS on fire, had an incredible three-on-three -three tournament, really put up a lot of points at the beginning of the, the Liga season, 
But when it stopped coming for him, things started getting harder. And so what the TPS management or coaching did is they put him in the sidelines. They put him up in the press box for a couple of games saying, you need to step away from the ice and start focusing on defense because if you don't, things are going to go well for you. And he did. He came, he was in the press box two games, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it was two games. Came back, started playing a little bit more defense, started learning from the lessons that they were teaching him and applied them. And my God, it worked. It really did. I, I've spoken to his coach a number of times and he says, yes, he learned. He's still not the strongest defensive player in the league, but he never will be. But his defense is way better than what it was at the beginning of the year. So this kid is learning and learning the important lessons of playing defense and applying them. So not only does he have that top rated skill, but my God, he can play defense now. And the kid can shoot. Like It's not that this kid is Oliver Wallstrom, but he's got a hell of a shot on him that he uses from time to time. Again, pass first player, but still a guy that can shoot. The third and final prospect I want to bring up is goalie Henrik Tikkanen, a seventh round pick from 2020. So why is he not highly rated? Well, already he's a seventh round pick, and that tells you a lot, right? When it comes to the draft, seventh round picks are seen as darts, right? You're throwing something against the board, hoping it sticks. Uh, he's also kind of old for a recent draft pick, that is. He turns 21 in September, so he's not necessarily young. Most of these kids are just turning 19, some of them turning, you know, maybe 20, maybe. But he's turning 21 which tells you why he was picked in the seventh round. He also hasn't gone pro until this year. He was playing U20 level up until last year, uh, and this was his first pro season. So again, when it comes to his age group, he doesn't really stand out. But why he's underrated is that he got a chance to play top-tier pro in Finland, and he did very, very well. So he started off the year playing in Mestis League, which is the second tier of Finnish hockey. He was playing for IPK, which is Kalpa's farm team, Kalpa's a league aside. And he didn't do that well uh, at the uh, Messes League level. He put up a 3.25 goals against average and an 8.77 save percentage in 12 games. Not a huge sample size, but still reflective enough to say like he wasn't really the factor for IPK winning, let's say. But later on in the season, Kalpa's goalie core was decimated with injury. And so they called Henrik Tikkanen up and he did very well. In seven games, he put up a 194 goals against average and a 921 save percentage. And this is the top tier finish level, right? Like he's playing league level and putting up sub two goals against average and above 920 save percentage. That's incredible. There's clearly something there with the giant goalie. And I say giant because he's 6'8". He's 6'8". He's massive. And it's not just because he stands in the way that he's good. He's fast. He's athletic, and he stays calm under pressure. He's got all of the makings of a potential breakout star, maybe not star, but a breakout play here from the seventh round. The Islanders might really have something in Henrik Tikkanen. We'll see this year in 21-22, he's going to play at the pro level for Kalpa. And, and by that, I mean like at the legal level. And we'll see how well he does there. But so far, so good with Henrik Tikkanen. And I think that we've got something there with them. Again, thank you for subscribing. If you haven't yet, please do so um, and stick around. There's plenty more to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.